highways are engineering marvels. They span rivers, ravines, and mountains. And they help millions of people around the world traverse billions of miles every day. But did you know that when new roads are built, they not only change the landscape, they can also greatly impact the animals and plants that live near them. It makes it difficult for animals to find uh, important resources such as food, such as mates, uh, denning areas, uh, areas for, for refuge. So it really makes it difficult for animals to survive. Dr. Tony Clevenger is a wildlife biologist at Montana State University. For the past 17 years, he has been studying the impact of the Trans-Canada Highway on wildlife in Canada's Banff National Park. Here, a series of crossing structures have been constructed to help wildlife safely cross the busy highway. From grizzly bears, elk and wolves, to reptiles, birds, even insects and plants. With enough traffic volume and enough width of the, the roadway, it, it can affect seed dispersal, it can affect uh, butterflies, it can affect insects, some of these smaller organisms and parts of the ecosystem that we don't normally think about. Today, Tony talks with eighth grader Jasmine about the wildlife crossing structures. This highway has, on average, more than 25,000 vehicles per day. Wow. Almost 35,000 in summer, like where we are now. So you can imagine how difficult it is for wildlife to cross this road. Well, let's go up and take a little closer look at the overpass. All right. The crossing structures come in two forms, overpasses and underpasses. The overpass looks just like a normal bridge, except it's covered on top by trees and vegetation creating a natural looking corridor for wildlife. It's closed to the public to reduce the amount of human disturbance here, human activity. And the reason for that is because our research, all the monitoring that we've done has shown that the more human use we have at these underpasses and overpasses, the less likely wildlife are gonna use them. How would the animals know how to use it? The fencing guides them to these crossing structures, but it takes time for them to find them, to start entering into them, to start feeling comfortable using them, and, and then eventually using them on a regular basis. Underpasses are similar to overpasses, except instead of going over the highway, they go under it. At this underpass, Tony and Jasmine are lucky enough to see it in use. Well, this is pretty cool. A herd of bighorn sheep here, the wildlife underpass. Back here they come. We can move out of the way here. This is a typical open span bridge underpass. Lots of light, wide, high. Yeah, these are bighorn sheep tracks. You can see they're really rounded. There's some over there too. Oh yeah. Yeah, those are, those are real typical. These are some old elk tracks. Real big. A lot of tracks. Look at all these. It's like a big trail through here. Over a 17-year period, Tony has helped document over 150,000 wildlife crossings in the overpasses and underpasses, proving that structures like these work. The way that we monitor these crossing structures is using uh, trail cameras, so infrared digital cameras that just take photographs as soon as the animals pass in front of it. They're motion activated, also heat sensors. Once we have a lot of information over many years, we can start doing analyses to find out what it is about these underpasses that wildlife like or don't like. Today, there are hundreds of wildlife crossing structures all over the world, from Germany to Spain to Kenya, many influenced by those in Banff National Park, and all the result of people from different science disciplines working together. It's not just the job of the wildlife biologist, but it's, a, it's really an interdisciplinary or a cooperative approach that requires uh, engineers, it requires landscape architects, and even to some extent transportation planners. Through careful planning and teamwork, wildlife crossing structures are already making a big impact. We found that it's reduced mortality on the highway by over 80 to 90 percent. But We found that not only there's a lot of animals using these crossings, but it's benefited populations. So we've been able, actually been able to show that, that there's been gene flow by black bears and grizzly bears by using these crossing structures. Crossing structures that allow two worlds to coexist, making the road safer for both animals and humans. <laughs>